tutorial is just going to give you an overview of Objective C. It's probably going to be way more information than you want to know, but sometimes it's interesting knowing the history of a language. And then we can talk a little bit more about uh, what Objective C actually does. Um, so, right here, uh, I want to show you that Objective C is a derivative of, of C. Excuse me. Um, what is Objective C? So, uh, for starters, uh, it's a programming language. Uh, more specifically, it's a completely object-oriented programming language, meaning it can be described as having descended from Smalltalk, which is a company, and the C language. So since it uses a modified C compiler, a compiler is what takes your code and then turns it into computer language and then puts your whole program together, and it can be, it can be uh, implemented with C code. So it borrows an object manipulation method, the syntax. In other words, from Smalltalk. So unlike C and C++, there's no formal written standard for it, and, and therefore the language uh, has to rely on uh, other libraries or else it makes having the, uh, the client have to make their own from scratch. Now, this is also a dynamic language where uh, very little is done at compile time, meaning using dynamic typing, linking, and binding, it also allows more flexibility when running. So when we're importing at the very beginning the foundations.h, when we're connecting these things and using the import functions, we're already connecting and binding information together with the code that we're making um, from other files. Let's talk about the inventors real quick. Brad Cox and Tom Love uh, were both at, at an ITT tech center uh, where they were introduced to small talk and object-oriented programming. So Cox, uh, he became very interested in this in object-oriented program as he thought it would be invaluable in building uh, powerful developer environments uh, for system developers. So in 1983, he started modifying a C compiler uh, for use with the object-oriented programming and eventually came up with a working extension called um, object-oriented programming. Uh, OOPC, which stands for Object Oriented Programming in C. Uh, I'm going to go pretty quick here. The development, now Love was hired by Schumlenberg uh, Research and had an opportunity to work with one of the first commercial copies of Smalltalk. Love with uh, his first-hand experience with direct access to Smalltalk, he added more to the OOPC, Object Oriented Programming in C, created the first release of Objective-C. Now the language is released in 1986, through the company they created called Stepstone. Now this is very important because we're going to talk about Steve Jobs, the ex-CEO uh, that just died and, and how he was involved in this. And that same year Brad Cox wrote a book uh, which describes a language or an early form of it. Now if you, if you want to know more about Objective-C you should check it out. Um, next step and next step. Now in 1988 Steve Jobs who left Apple, he left in 1985, um, but he started Next Software in 1988. He gets a license to use this Objective-C from Stepstone, which was invented by uh, the other two that I mentioned. Uh, he uses it to build an operating system for his Next computers. Now, their new operating system, Next Step, was built from the Mac kernel, the Mac kernel from BSD Unix system base, which is an open source um, operating system. And with Objective-C interface, Objective-C, interface design and implementation was pretty easy together. Now, next step demonstrates the use of, of Object-C in practical terms. Since Objective-C has no standard library of its own, Next basically wrote the primary implementation of Objective-C. They eventually get the rights for Objective-C. Soon other machines wanted to use something like next step. So what we want to talk about now is the OpenStep API. Now, so they started to develop OpenStep jointly uh, with Sun Microsystems. So unlike NextStep, which was an operating system and set of libraries, uh, they wanted to make just an operating system independent, an operating OS independent set of libraries. That would mean removing all dependencies on the Mac or Mac kernel that was in uh, NextStep and BSD. They also made low level data types into classes a low-level data would be something like strings or date stamps into classes, names, names, NS string for next step string, where NS stands for next son, the develop the developers. So I'll talk more about them later. Um, now, what we want to talk about is Apple and Mac OS. In 1996, Steve Jobs, a uh, former place of employment, comes in and takes over next and with it next step in Objective C. So then Apple puts them all to work, jobs included. 
Uh, since Next Step worked wonderfully, they decided to implement it into their macOS family of OS's, operating systems. So from Next Step, they developed a new API, which they called Coco, to work with Objective-C, which was Apple's, um, which uh, Coco is basically the foundation of, of most Mac OS X. You can make Coco applications also in uh, Xcode 4. You'll see the option for that on the tab. Uh, so from Next Step, uh, which was from BSD, they made Mac OS 10. Um, OS 10 was radically different than their previous Mac OSs, which set Apple Incorporated forward um, with uh, new in to have a new future. Now the Coco API is nowadays more frequently used when um, used when using Objective C. Coco saw influence from Open Step and Next Step, and that they uh, use NS objects like in Open Step. Okay, so next sun, next step, uh, NS objects like an open step. Almost any object made in Cocoa must inherit uh, from NS object in order to use the methods provided by the framework. Now, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this in the next uh, tutorial that I have. It's going to be uh, pretty, pretty, it's going to simplify everything that I'm talking about right here. Now, dynamic language. Uh, Objective-C is a wholly dynamic language. Dynamic typing allows minimal memory usage as the OS does not need to keep track of what things are until they need to use them. Dynamic means changing. Static means uh, fixed position. Okay, So in a dynamic language, it means it only calls the things that are necessary to call it when it needs them. Uh, DB means it won't have to merge function calls with parameters until it needs to run them. Now, and DL um, allows more things to be added to the program while it runs, so dynamic linking, okay? Um, in, in all three aspects are perfect for running an operating system where changes can be uh, made while the system is still running, which is pretty awesome. Instead of having to load all of your variables, everything at the very beginning, this dynamic language allows you to start adding things as you need them, allowing you to have more free processor uh, time. So we want to talk about to import or include, and in some of the presentations you see, this is what is going to be similar to you. Now, Objective-C introduces a precompile command import, which unlike C and C++, is, uh, include, include uh, would check to see whether or not the file, in this case the head.h, which is the header file, has been imported before. If the file has been added before, then it will not import it again. Uh, this is to eliminate the redundancy uh, that you would have if you're continuously importing something you already imported, adding the same file over and over and over again, and to prevent uh, compilation errors when duplicate functions are declared. Now, importing will aid in inheritance and in adding classes to a program because one import could call so many other imports, so you need as little as one import. Does that make sense? Um, we can talk about that. Uh, in, in a minute. In, in, in the following tutorials, guys, if you feel behind and you're like, I don't even know why I'm watching this, um, I'm going to simplify this down to like they do in the, I don't know, Objective-C for Dummies book or whatever. And I read those, by the way, so don't be offended by that. Okay, now we want to talk about messages. Now the primary aspect of Objective-C derived from Smalltalk was the messaging system. So in other words, at runtime, a message, which could be a function, and we'll talk about those, those are methods, you know, a lot of people use a method, function, different things. They're the same. Okay. It's sent to an object, and it does what the message says. So this is what dynamic binding is. Does that make sense? Uh, so you send a message to an object, and, the, and it does whatever the message says. That's why it's an object. So in other words, if, if, if you're sending a message to Sally, uh, then Sally is getting the message and doing what it is that you're asking her to do. Or you're sending a message to Jack, then Jack is doing whatever it is that you're wanting Jack to do. So the syntax consists of two words in brackets, uh, usually the identifier, which represents an object or a class. And these are pre-established classes, and I'll talk about what classes mean in the next tutorial. And a message to be a method or a function to you C++ enthusiasts out there. Does that make sense? It represents an object or a class and a message to be a method or a function uh, to C++. Uh, enthusiasts. Okay, right now we're going to talk about aquí, uh, sorry, aquí vamos. Um, right now we're going to talk about this. 
Uh, basic syntax structure, and I want to show you the difference. Uh, right here you see the C++ above syntax right here, and then you see the void function below. This is going to be look very similar to uh, JavaScript uh, 2, which I'm going to show you in the next tutorial because I want to see you how I want to see you. I want you to see how these work. Um, C++ syntax void function is a function that is not returning anything directly to the person. So they have their integers, their variables, x, integer, y, character, z, um, object dot function, x, y, z. Okay, that's the C++ uh, syntax. Now we want to talk about the objective C uh, syntax. You have uh, a hyphen, then you have parentheses void function, and you're doing these things very similarly. Okay, objective function, uh, and then object function XYZ and we'll talk about that later uh, that's the syntax structure now we have a good way to in, in implement uh, DT is to use uh, generic identifiers like this type ID now IDs work like pointers to objects which if you're in, in language C or C++ you're gonna see these are objects now is a good example of how IDs work as written by Cox in this book so you have uh, this uses an object much like a pointer in C++, this uses dynamic typing, for example, if pen is a class, this is a citation from this book, external id pen, then the id my pen, then my pen equals new pen. So we can talk about that um, a little bit uh, more in the following tutorial. Now you're probably saying, I'm completely lost, that's okay, we're gonna assume this, sum this up real quick. Now memory allocation, objects are created uh, dynamically through the keyword allocate so you need to allocate some space for what it is that you're using right so on your table you when you're putting stuff down on your table you need a place for plates you need a place for your uh, for whatever it is you have on your table your books blah 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 so you're allocating space so ALLOC means allocate space now objects are dynamically deallocating deallocated using the words release and auto release in Xcode 4 you're gonna see that some of those releases are necessary now auto release deallocates the object once it goes out of scope. So in other words, you free up that space that you use for that object right after you're done using it, which is awesome. Um, now when an object gets created, it must, uh, it must be deallocated later on. So in other words, that frees up the space. Now, um, I want to note that none of these words are built in. They're all functions of a root class like NS object in Coco, and we can talk about that uh, later, let's talk about ownership real quick. Ownership. Um, objects are owned by IDs that point to them. So multiple IDs can own. Um, much like C++ pointers, the IDs can point to the same object. Um, however, like with C++ pointers, if the object is it, it's referencing goes out of scope or otherwise gets released by another ID, then any other IDs using the object become invalidated. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, using the retain keyword, the object will remain in the system when any ID releases it. So, however, retain will keep the object until it gets explicitly deleted. That's why we're using <coughs> retain. Let's talk about prototyping functions. Now, when declaring or implementing functions for a class, they must begin with a plus or a minus, okay? Um, the plus indicates a class method that can only be used by the class itself. In other words, they're for private functions. Okay, private functions means they're not public functions. Now, I'm gonna talk about that later. Now, the minus indicates instance methods to be used by the client program, which are public uh, functions. Uh, a plus would be used for something like object allocation, a constructor, which is the only thing um, I've seen someone uh, really sued for, so I'm not sure if it can be used for other things. Um, now, <laughs> primary, I'm just kidding, not a bad joke, okay. Primarily, the ID is a, is a class in this case, okay? Um, now, let's talk about class declaration. Uh, now, right here for my example program, I don't have that much time, I'm gonna have to put this in two tutorials, you have this example. For my example program, a stack, it uses nodes in our each file. I'm going to show you this other one that I want to do, class definition. You can pause this if you want. I'm going to talk about these in the next tutorial. And then we're going to talk about C++ versus Objective-C, Objective-C 2.0, and then we're going to talk about link list class and stack class.